Hey everybody, welcome back to Windy City Astrophotography. My name is Nick, and in this video I'm going to be talking a lot about monochrome imaging, but there's going to be something for everybody here. If you're a monochrome imager, you may be familiar with the conundrum where you've got a lot of great, say, hydrogen alpha data, but no other channels to show for it. You don't have your sulfur, you don't have your oxygen, and so you're kind of stuck. Hydrogen alpha data is great, it's an extremely strong signal in most cases, and you can perhaps get a nice black and white image from it. But if you're looking to add a little bit more pop to it, maybe give it a little bit more of a polished look to it, uh, maybe looking like some of the modified DSLR images with a nice deep red color, this video is going to be for you. We're going to do a quick walkthrough in PixInsight. So let's hop into PixInsight. So we're going to be working here on an image of the Propeller Nebula that I was able to get a couple of nights ago. This is about 90 minutes of data integrated here. And you can see this is a starless image I'm going to be working on the original. We can see here, uh, very nice strong signal. This is near the Sater and Butterfly Nebula region in Cygnus. So I went from that into my starless image, and I've also got my stars saved, so I'm non-linear at this point. This walkthrough is going to start from a point where you've done everything you want to with your hydrogen alpha data. You've done your local histogram equalization. Perhaps you've done some unsharp mask. You might have been doing a little bit of tweaking, uh, maybe a luminance mask and things like that to try and really bring out as much detail as possible and make it as clean as possible as well. So we're assuming all that has happened up until this point. Now we're going to be uh, trying to add a little bit of red color to this image. So the first thing I tried when I was curious to see if this was possible was actually to use the channel combination process here. And I would say, okay, I'm going to use H alpha as the red channel, and I'm just going to not have any red, uh, green or blue. We hit apply. We ended up getting this really deep red. It's actually uh, turns out to be pretty tough to work with this particular imagery. Instead, the thing to do is to take this grayscale hydrogen alpha image, and I'm actually just going to copy this here so I don't uh, affect my original there. What we're going to do is turn it from grayscale to an RGB image. Now you could do this by going into channel combination and just adding this to all of the channels. But what I'm going to do is go up to image here, go to color spaces, and then convert to RGB color. So now we have an RGB image of this. Now what I'm going to do is uh, extract the luminance data from that RGB image. I have a luminance layer and my RGB uh, H alpha data, which sounds a little bit strange to say, but essentially it's three evenly balanced channels, RGB, all of which have that H alpha data in it. So what I'm going to do now is apply this luminance mask to the H alpha data. So right now I'm uh, kind of blocking out the background and I'm really just going to be working on of the brightest parts of this image. I'm actually going to hide that mask now, but you can see here it is still active. We're going to go into, let's hide this here. We're going to go into curves and let's get a good preview working here. So first I want to do here is I'm going to boost that red channel. So we're going to bring that up and we can go pretty far with this. Don't have to be shy. If we're adding green, we want to take, uh, excuse me, adding red, we want to take away the green and take away the blue. So we'll bring those down as well. Now, it's not completely red yet, but let's uh, go ahead and hit apply and hit apply again. So now we've got a fairly deep red. Now let's take away a little bit more blue, take away a little bit more green, and we're going to boost that red color. That's looking really nice. Let's go ahead and hit apply. All right. So now there's a few things that you can do here. You can uh, work on all the channels and bring a little bit more brightness to the areas we're seeing here. Maybe bring down the, the background darkness as well, but you can see we've got this nice rich red color to the hydrogen alpha region. Let's go ahead and hit apply there. And we might do one more change here. I'm just going to work on this C component of the CIE. We're just going to boost that just slightly at the nice red color. Come now, that's looking really nice. All right, let's close that down. So 
essentially we went from what we have on the left to what we have on the right. So much more red and looking really nice. Let's get rid of that mask. And I'm just going to do a little bit more of a curve to brighten up the bright areas. Let's get a good preview going and I'll bring it down. Ooh, not that much. I do want to keep a little bit of that background nebulosity in there. That's looking pretty nice. Kind of go between the two. It's a little bit too much on the bright. Bring that down just slightly, a very slight S curve there. But that's looking really nice. We'll apply. And let's do a little bit of a luminance adjustment. Now, when you boost the luminance here, you're going to lose a little bit of your saturation. So a slight S curve there. That's looking pretty good. Now let's make sure we boost that saturation just slightly, just to make sure we don't lose that good color. All right. I'm pretty happy with this for now. And we'll hide that away. So what we're going to do at this point is add in stars once again. And uh, to do that, all we have to do, let's name this something memorable. Let's say propeller red. And we have our nonlinear stars right over here. So essentially in pixel math, we're just going to add these two together. I think this is bright enough. One thing you could do is do a little bit of exponential transformation. This is a, a process that I like quite a bit just to give a little bit more pop to your image right before. In fact, let's stick with that. Let's see how that looks in the final. And I am missing a little bit of the darkness of this uh, dark nebulosity right in front of the propeller. So I'm going to go up here into scripts and utilities and do some dark structure enhance. And let's just let that run at 40%. Nice. That's a great script if you have a lot of the silhouetted dark nebulosity in front of some of the brighter regions. It really brings it out if we go back and then forward. Not a lot of nice contrast there. All right, so we have propeller red and nonlinear stars. Let's add those together in pixel math. So we have nonlinear stars and we're going to add propeller red together. Now we want to make sure we create a new image. We do just want to specify that this is going to be RGB color. And let's hit apply. Okay, so here we have our combined image. Now, these are white stars. This is not RGB stars that we're adding in or anything special like that. So they are just white, which in this case is okay. Uh, narrowband imaging is by definition not realistic. It isn't how our eyes would see these things in the sky. And uh, if you're doing an SHO, a Hubble palette image anyway, you're going to get these magenta stars. A lot of people are going to take that magenta out anyway to try and deal with that. So not too worried about being true to um, the, the true color of these stars with narrowband imaging. If perhaps you were imaging with a one shot color and you got a lot of those nice stars, you could add in those RGB stars to this H alpha nebulosity image. That might be a really good, uh, uh, cool view. Uh, but in this case, I'm just happy with having those white stars there. I'm going to do a little bit of star reduction here. This is a process that I learned on Visible Dark with Sean Nielsen. He had walked through uh, this process, which uh, I believe he had actually learned from somebody else. Uh, I will make sure to link in the description to uh, uh, sort of the full history of this particular process. I've made a copy of my original image. I'm going to flatten the image using an HDR multi-scale transform. Then I get to create a star mask of that flattened image. And these are all values that I've already put into these processes here and that it works really well with the, the kind of imaging that I do. So there's the star mask. Now I'm going to apply that star mask to my full image, the one that wasn't flattened with the process there. So we can kind of hide this here. And then we're going to use star size reduction with the morphological transformation. So let's apply that and bring those down. So yeah, that worked really nicely. Go backwards and forwards. Just helps that nebulosity show through a little bit more. So between the two on the left hand side, we've got our starless image, which can be nice. And then we've got the HA stars 
have it back in on the right. Now you can go a little bit crazier with some of this with a little bit more processing, kind of depends how you go. I've gone a little bit more bold as I was walking through it here, but here were a couple other ones I'd done before that didn't come through quite as, didn't have quite as much pop to it. It left a little bit more of the darkness in the background behind the nebulosity. But I think these look really cool. I think it's a great way to take hydrogen alpha data that you may be sitting on and waiting to integrate into an HOO or an SHO image. You may not have that other data quite yet, but you can at least do something, have something you could share online and say, hey, it's not monochrome. It's not the black and white image of HA, which has its own special charm, but this is something that's got a little bit more color to it. As I said before, it looks a little bit like uh, maybe a modified DSLR image um, with that nice red nebulosity coming through. We're missing, missing a little bit of the star color here, but uh, overall, I think it's pretty great. So if you've done something like this before, do you perhaps have a, a different way of going about it, a different way to do this, maybe in PixInsight or in a different program entirely? Definitely let me know in the comments. If you found this video useful, please do give it a like. That's going to help others find it useful as well. And of course, if you haven't yet, definitely do subscribe to Windy City Astrophotography and Clear Skies. We'll see you next time.